Uh, now, every year, air pollution is linked to thousands of deaths across the UK, and a recent study has found it's not just damaging our lungs, but could also increase our risk of dementia. Today is World Clean Air Day, which aims to encourage people to find new ways to combat the problem. Presenter Jonathan Gibson has been looking at some game-changing new technology to see if the answer could be right under our feet. When you're on the move and hunger strikes, there's only one thing that'll keep my godson happy. Burgers. And going to the drive throughs the quick and easy option. Hi, can I order, please? Hi, can I get a plain burger, please? But what you might not realise is that each order could come with a side of harmful pollution. With so many cars in such a small space, those emissions can stack up. So in 2020, I teamed up with Dr Anitha Chinaswamy and Coventry University to do one of the first studies into air pollution at drive throughs This is the device that we're going to be using. What does that enable us to do? It measures the gaseous pollutants and the particulate matter. Now, to you and me, these are the tiny bits of certain nasty gases like nitrogen oxides thrown out by exhaust pipes. Bad enough on a motorway, but at least your windows are shut. At drive throughs however, car engines are running while stationary, and both you and the person serving you have your windows open. So, fingers crossed we get some usable data. Good luck. I spent two weeks recording pollution levels at 10 drive throughs across the country, mounting our monitors on the back of a van at the same height and distance from the drive through as the workers serving at the window. Dr Chinaswamy did the number crunching, and I gave her plenty to work with as I visited half a dozen Mackey D's, a couple of KFC's, a Burger King and a Costa Coffee drive through across England, Wales and Scotland. Gonna end up three stone heavier. But joking aside, the results were pretty serious. Take this drive through in Birmingham, where levels of PM10, the larger particles found in exhaust soot, peaked at 22 times the legal limit. And at this Costa Coffee in Somerset, levels of PM2.5, the even smaller particles found in exhaust soot, reached five times the legal limit although in both cases, average levels were much lower. But that wasn't the case at this drive through in southeast London, where levels of nitrogen dioxide were on average 25% above the legal limit throughout our entire experiment. So if that two-week period that we monitored was representative of the, the year as a whole, those levels would be above the legal limit? Yes, if, if it continued in the same uh, manner, then yes, we are looking at some really high pollution. Back then, McDonald's told me they don't agree their staff are exposed to readings that are high thanks to ventilation systems within the building and the size of the hatch through which people are served. But amazingly, in the two years since that investigation, a ventilation system for outside buildings like this has been developed. Today, I'm testing this working prototype that could radically reduce roadside emissions. Every time a car pulls into the drive through lane, think of these two green channels as effectively a giant vacuum cleaner, drawing the exhaust fumes straight into the vents. Let me show you what I mean with this smoke machine. The idea is the brainchild of Thomas Delgado, ironically, a former car salesman. Where did this idea come from? Yeah, so a long time ago, about eight years ago, I was walking through my local town and I saw traffic, uh, sitting at a set of traffic lights, basically pumping out fumes that were leaving the exhaust, lingering on the ground, and then slowly dissipating away. And I thought to myself, I had a bit of a eureka moment, and thought, surely we could invent some kind of vacuum to pull those fumes into the road and clean them somewhere. So as soon as those pollutants are sucked into the channel, what happens next? Very simply, those pollutants enter the channel, they go straight into a pipe, that then gets pushed into the bottom of the air cabinet here. The air then enters as dirty air and goes through a series of filtration and then leaves the top of the cabinet to a level of 98% cleanliness. Dave Lewis is the company's commercial and construction director. He says independent tests it's commissioned suggest it can cut levels of nitrogen dioxide by more than 80%. So in the top screen, you can see two vehicles pulling into a typical drive-through restaurant. This is with the road vent off. 
and as they pull in, you can see the spike in the pollution levels. The bottom screen is now showing with the row vent operating and you can see the difference in spike levels. So the initial tests sound promising, but this equipment isn't cheap at £60,000 per drive through plus installation and running costs. So are any of the drive through operators actually interested in buying it? They are. They're fairly tentative about the situation, as you can probably imagine, um, but we're confident that we can really improve their staff's well-being um, and that they will see the benefits for this in both the short term and in the long term. Burger King and McDonald's tell me, while they don't have any current plans to introduce this technology, they already take measures to protect their staff. And so does Costa Coffee, which is actively reviewed using an exhaust extraction system. All three companies feel that given the measures they have in place, their staff are not exposed to harmful levels of pollution. KFC didn't provide a response. What are the other applications for this technology? So initially, RoadVent was designed for improving uh, air quality at pollution hotspots in towns and cities. Um, so this could be uh, traffic lights, street junctions, so forth. But one that's really close to our hearts is improving air quality at schools, whether that's at the drop-off point or on the road immediately outside the school. Of course, electric cars are the ultimate solution to our emissions problem. But with the price of electricity what it is right now, these gas guzzlers might be around for a little bit longer. And if they are, well, this could just help keep those gases out of our lungs. Mm. Great piece of tech, though, isn't it? Yeah, some very clever people out oh, there, isn't yes. it? Also highlighting how much pollution there is around drive-ins. I yeah. would never have thought that before seeing that. And now we know. Interesting. Uh, we're staying with health now.